I'm Sean Stoffer, and we are on the scene live at El Gato Coffee House in the Heights area of Houston. Coffee and cats, two of my favorite things. This is Houston's first and only cat cafe. Let's go inside and meet the great people making it all happen, get a cup of joe, and meet some of those adoptable kitties. Renee Reed and Renee Reed is the owner and entrepreneur behind El Gato. Renee, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> this is awesome. How did you come up with this idea? Well, I can't take credit for the original idea itself. Um, it is a concept that started in the late 90s um, in Asia, but um, you know, came within the last like two and a half years or so to the U.S. and um, and so that kind of it coming to Austin made me realize that we can do this in Houston too. So that's how it took off here for me. And people don't have to be coming in just to adopt. They can come in and just hang out, right? That's right, yeah. We call it cat therapy. And so um, so cats have known um, benefits of lowering stress and um, blood pressure. And so, um, so yeah, people can come in and, and sometimes they think that they're not going to adopt and then they find one that they really bond with. And so, like, like yourself. <laughs> That's right. I adopted Alice. Alice yeah. was one of the original residents here. Yeah. And I saw crafts classes online. Tell us about that and some of the other activities. Yeah. And so, um, we do a lot of crochet here. So, we have um, a Crochet 101. And then, um, this month, we're also offering a 102. So, more of an intermediate class. And um, a watercolor and pencil class as well. Um, and <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, so like our, our um, craft classes have been really popular, and so um, a crafter noon class, which is making cat toys. So, all, and that's what most of our um, arts are about, or um, making some type of toy for. It, the isn't cats. there yoga as well? Yoga, movie nights, um, Catterday morning cartoons. So, we're having a lot of fun with cats over here. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah. Is there a certain type of cat that you like to focus on adopting out? Yeah, we like to focus on um, cats that are a little bit older, not quite kittens, um, ones that may be um, getting overlooked at the shelters. So, um, so when they come here, um, our guests have the opportunity to see how amazing older cats can really be. And, um, and so we've had a lot of luck with those adoptions. With, um, we've had, our very first cat was an eight year old. We've adopted a 10 year old. And um, so yeah, so we're doing really well with the older cats. That's here. wonderful, because a lot of times I think people don't realize how hyper a new kitten can be. <laughs> They're a handful. <laughs> they really are. And so when we do adopt kittens out, um, we always try to uh, adopt them with their litter mate um, because two is really, um, it, it's a lot more manageable, manageable, believe it or not, um, when you have the kittens. Right. And this wonderful bridge that's above us. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so we were really fortunate to have met um, James Waters of James Waters Creation. Um, so he custom made these bridges. Um, this is his first one ever to have done. Um, just kind of showed him some examples of what we were looking for here. And um, it's really turned into quite the work of art. I'm so happy with it. The cats awesome. absolutely love it. They love it. Like they really do love it. And so do our guests. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for sure. Can you tell me like one super touching story or moment since you've opened? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't know that there's just one, to be honest. It's hard to, um, to think of just one. Um, I, I love to see the smiles in, in people's faces. A lot of people are coming here to celebrate birthdays or um, some family members are so sweet they even bring um, their friends and families as a surprise and so they won't know where they are and just to see the amazement and some of them have never even heard of a cat cafe and so they walk in the doors with uh, you know just mind blown yeah and um, you know so happy and just yeah it's awesome yeah. Yeah, I, I've witnessed a lot of joy here just yeah. from today and then we get to complete people's homes too whenever they come in with an adoption and so we're celebrating night having 19 adoptions right now and so that's what makes this all worthwhile Renee, tell me a little bit about the TNR programs here in Houston and the stray cat population problem that we face. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, so there's so many really awesome organizations out there that are doing a lot to help um, with the overpopulation 
and um, you know a couple of my favorite that are out there is Hope um, as well as the Animal Justice League and so I actually um, kind of found myself living among um, an overpopulated neighborhood and um, and honestly that's that's kind of how I got to where I am right now in doing this um, and so um, Hope was the one who came to me, they, or I came to them, but they came to my rescue, I guess I should say. <laughs> um, loaned me a couple of cages, taught me all of the skills needed um, to, to do the TNR, um, which um, for those of you guys who, who aren't uh, aware of, of what um, tag, neuter, and release is, um, so it's, it's a humane way to, um, to, to catch um, not just feral cats, also I, I like to call them community cats. Um, so the cats that are living on our street that um, maybe they're not necessarily fit to be living in someone's home. Um, you know, some cats prefer to be like outside cats. And so, um, so with TNR programs, we're getting those um, cats, we're taking them to get them either spay or neutered. And um, if you've ever noticed the notched ear, um, that's an indication of um, a TNR cat. And so um, they've also received their vaccinations. And um, one thing I really love for people to know is in the city of Houston as well, um, the city does a lot to help to help people out too. And so um, if, if you find yourself living um, among a, co a colony of cats, um, don't be overwhelmed. These organizations are out there to help. The city is there to help. So um, Bark, if you register your colony, and um, they'll actually pay to spay and neuter your cats once your cats are registered with them. And there's a lot of misconceptions about strays or, or ferals, mm -hmm. that they spread disease, and all that's false, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of good things that they're doing. Um, you know, they're, they're taking care of, um, you know, like the rat problems, which used to be really bad in, in Houston. And and a lot of people don't realize TNR is actually cheaper than trapping and euthanizing. Isn't oh, that correct? oh, absolutely. And and another thing that people don't realize about the colonies either is, um, you know, some people think I'm going to go and I'm going to dump this cat or I'm going to bring it to a shelter. And um, that's not how colonies work. So colony of cats, they know whenever um, the population is dwindling down and that actually incentivizes them to procreate. And so the colony will grow whenever they're, they're getting that absent. We're visiting with Crystal Lynn Sosa. Crystal Lynn, tell us a little bit about the adoption process. So practically we have our cats just visit up with the clients and the customers and after they visit after so much, then they, they end up telling us that they end up liking them, they fall in love with them, they put in an application after getting to know them and we just go through the process from there. Is it moving? Is it sentimental when you get attached to one and he goes home or she goes home? So currently the one I'm attached to is Sunny, but that's because he's our tripod and he's so adorable. So it, it is kind of sad when they end up leaving. But. but it's wonderful. It's heartwarming too, right? It is actually, it is. But we love to see them go, but not in a bad way, but we love to see them go because they end up for in a forever home. I'm with Zanira Seth, one of the volunteers here. Zanira, thank you for talking to us today. Hi, thank you. And what is your favorite part about working here at El Gato? So um, I love cats, I always have, and I've always wanted to do something that was productive and, and helped our society in some way. So I think it's just been great working here, getting to meet the different cats, um, seeing them get adopted and go to loving homes. Uh, we always miss them here, but it's great knowing that they have a space to call their own. Is there a favorite cat you have? Um, I've had many favorites, all who have gotten adopted, <laughs> so it's a good and bad thing, but currently um, Sheldon's my favorite at the moment. He just kind of follows me around. He's my favorite too. Is, yeah, <laughs> he just follows people around. He's a really friendly cat. So, Has the neighborhood response here in the Heights been great so far? Yeah, um, everyone's been really supportive. People love the area. People in the area like to support us, so it's been great. Thank you so much, Renee Reed, for being with us. Oh, uh, thank you so much for coming out. <laughs> and there you have it, El Gato Coffee House, located at 508 Pecor Street in the Heights. 
or on the web, www.elgatocoffeehouse.com. I'm Sean Stoffer for KVQT Channel 21, Houston. We'll see you next time on The Scene Live.